Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to cover step response performance specifications for second order systems. So here is the type of system that we're going to look at. It has a DC gain in the numerator and omega n squared s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus an omega n squared in the denominator. Now before we get into looking at these time domain specs, and here's what I'm talking about, we're going to look at rise time, settling time, percent overshoot, and the time of the peak overshoot. Let's look at what the pole locations of this system look like in the complex plane. So here we have a couple poles, and for this case, I'm assuming that zeta is between 0 and 1, so the system is underdamped. This distance is omega n. This distance is omega d, the damped natural frequency, which is omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And this distance is zeta omega n. And this angle is the inverse sine of zeta. Now in a previous video we looked at these four time domain specifications. There were actually step response performance specifications and we looked at that just for general transfer functions. Second order, higher order, etc. What we're going to do here is we're going to approximately relate these quantities to zeta and omega n. Here's the formulas. The settling time, and I should say that this is the 1% settling time, is approximately equal to 4.6 over zeta omega n. The rise time, this is the time it takes to go from 10% to 90% of the final value is approximately 1.8 over omega n. Now this works great when zeta is about 0.6. When zeta is different from 0.6, it's okay, but it's not quite great. But it's good enough to get you going. Percent overshoot is 100 times e to the negative pi zeta over 1 minus zeta squared square root and the time of the peak overshoot is pi over omega d. Now before we hop into MATLAB and take a look at, at these quantities using LTI view, let's go ahead and just explore them a little bit further from the complex plane perspective. So let me go down to a new page. And let's see, I'll use up most of the page. So what I'll do is I'll just put a couple poles here and here. Mm. There we go. And what we'll do is, is make some lines in here for constant values of things like settling time, rise time, percent overshoot, etc. So let's see, we had T settling time is about 4.6 over zeta omega n. So this is only a function of zeta omega n, and that's the distance that these poles are from the imaginary axis. So what that means is that this dashed line is actually a dashed line of constant TS, settling time. So if I were to somehow move those poles up and down that dashed line, my step response settling time would stay approximately the same. Now let's look at the rise time. That was about 1.8 over omega n. Well, omega n is the distance from the origin of the complex plane out to the pole. So what this is saying is that if I were to swing an arc, semicircle, like so, 
that's a semicircle, believe it or not. Um, if I were to move the poles along that semicircle, I would maintain the same rise time. So that arc is a constant TR arc. Now, percent overshoot was 100 e to the negative pi zeta over the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. But all we really need to take away from this is that it's a function only of zeta. So if I draw these diagonal lines out like so through the poles, and I'll make the poles a little bit bolder now, those lines are constant percent overshoot. And our last one was the time of the peak overshoot, which was pi over omega d. Omega d is the distance that these poles are from the real axis. And so that means that these lines are a constant tp, time of the peak overshoot. Turns out that when we're getting into control system design later, these lines could be very important because they tell us how we can move around in the complex plane and either maintain a constant rise time or change the percent overshoot, etc. So it's good to have a nice understanding of this. Well, now what we'll do is explore a couple different transfer functions using MATLAB. And here's what we'll do. Here are the two transfer functions. And at this point, I want to pause and just point something out about all these beautiful design formulas we have. They only work for a very specific type of transfer function. Specifically, these second order transfer functions with no zeros. And so that's the kind we're going to look at here. So let's go ahead and calculate a few things. I'll call this omega n1 squared is equal to this term, which is 25. That tells us that omega n1 is equal to 5 radians per second. Now if I focus on that term, 2 zeta 1 omega n1 is equal to 2. And what that tells us is that zeta 1 is equal to 0.2. So now I can run through these formulas. Ts is about equal to 4.6 over zeta omega n, and zeta omega n is 1, so I just get 4.6. The rise time is about 1.8 over omega n1, so that's about 1.8 over 5. And the percent mp, well, we'd have to run through this formula that we had which was percent mp equals 100 negative pi zeta 1 minus zeta squared. And we'll come back to that later at the very end of the video because we could run through that and calculate what the percent overshoot is, but there's some other ways to do that that we'll explore. So now let's move over to this one. Omega n2 squared is equal to 2 which says omega n2 is equal to square root of 2, which is about 1.4. 2 zeta 2 omega n2 is equal to 2. And what that tells us is zeta 2 is equal to 1 over square root of 2, which is about 0.7. Ts is then Let's see, it would be 4.6 over zeta omega n. Zeta omega n is 1 again, so it's 4.6. So it's exactly the same that we had over here. Now, of course, those are approximations. The rise time is 1.8 over about 1.4. So pretty close to one second. Quite a bit different than this one, which was much smaller. And the percent mp is again, we could run through this equation. Now, I'm going to write something down. This is about 5%. It turns out that having a zeta of 0 
gives you a percent overshoot of about 5%. That's a good one to have on the tip of your tongue um, because 5% overshoot is kind of a nice uh, response and 0.7 is the corresponding zeta. It's a nice design point to go to sometimes. So with this information, a little bit of background about these two transfer functions, let's switch over to Mat MATLAB and LTI view. Let's code in these two transfer functions. So g1 is equal to the transfer function of 25 over s squared plus 2s plus 25. And actually, let's take a look at that. Beautiful. And j2 is transfer function of 2 over s squared plus 2s plus 2. Beautiful. Let's fire up LTI view. We have a blank palette. But we can easily import our two transfer functions. Shift click from the workspace. And there they are. The blue is G1 that had the damping ratio of 0.2. And the green is the G2 that had the, the, the higher damping ratio of 0.7. Now let's take a look at the rise time. Or no, let's do the settling time first. The settling time for those two transfer functions, according to our previous calculations, was going to be the same at 4.6. Now, before I actually pull that up on this plot, I'm going to go into Viewer Preferences, Options, and change the default settling time to the 1% settling time, because that's what our formula was based on. If I right-click in here, I can go to Characteristics and pick Settling Time. And look at that. So both of those settling times are pretty close to each other. They're not quite 4.6. The uh, lower zeta case is 4.58. And the higher zeta case is 4.66, but not too bad. Now let's look at the rise times. For the G1, our rise time was 1.8 over 5, or 0.36. For G2, the rise time was 1.8 over 1.4, or about 1.3. So 0.36 versus 1.3. Now we'll go to Characteristics rise time, and there they are. For the faster response, it's actually 0.241, which is a little bit off from 0.36, but not too bad. And for the slower response, it's 1.52. Again, a little bit off from 1.28. And remember what I said before, this rise time approximation works pretty well when zeta is about 0.6. Here we have zeta 0.2, here we have zeta 0.7. If we had made a transfer function with zeta 0.6, that approximation of 1.8 over omega n would have worked pretty well. For the last characteristic, we'll just take a look at the peak overshoot. This one is 53% overshoot with the low zeta, zeta 0.2, and for our zeta 0.7, around 4%, close to 5 that I was talking about before when we're working through the numbers. Okay, well let's do one last thing. Um, and actually what we'll do is we'll switch back to the drawing for a minute, and then we'll switch back to MATLAB. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is look at the percent overshoot. We had this formula, and it's okay. If we had a particular percent overshoot that we wanted, let's say 5%, and then had to solve for zeta, we could do it. We could put 0.05 over here is equal to e to the negative pi zeta over the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. We could take the natural log of both sides, like so. That gets rid of the e. And then solve for zeta squared and take a square root, square both sides of this, etc. The other thing we could do is just plot zeta versus percent MP, percent overshoot. We'll get a plot that looks something like this. And then we can just look up the percent overshoot we want and go down and pick off the zeta. So let's just take a quick look at that in MATLAB. Okay, so let's run our zeta from 0 0.001 in that same increment up to 1. So we're basically going from zeta equals 0 to 1. And then we'll go ahead and create our percent overshoot. 
So that's 100 times EXP of negative pi times zeta square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And notice I use the dot divide because I'm dividing an array by another array. And here I had to use the dot to the dot squared because again I just wanted to compute the element by element square of that array zeta. And now we'll just go plot zeta and p. There it is. Let's throw a grid on it. Now we have this beautiful plot where if we had a particular zeta that we wanted, then we can pull off the percent MP that would happen, or the other way around, which is probably more useful. Let me throw some labels on that. Great. So if we wanted a percent overshoot of 20%, we could go over here, and now we know that the zeta should be 0.45. This table is pretty popular. You'll find it in a lot of texts and other places for doing control system design. So just to recap, if you're so lucky that you have a second order system with no zeros, then you can take the step response performance specifications of rise time and settling time, percent overshoot, the time of the peak overshoot, and relate them to zeta and omega n. That's a wonderful thing. Then we can look at the complex plane in terms of constant step response performance spec lines, constant percent overshoot, constant settling time, etc. And of course we can always use LTI view or step info to get information about some second order system that we have. And finally, this notion of using a plot of percent overshoot versus zeta to quickly relate the two. Or you can always just solve the whole equation of 100 e to the negative pi zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.